All right. Yeah. Yeah. Hello, Camille. Hello. It's an honor to be able to ask you a question. Oh, sure. Personally. Go ahead. Uh, yeah. Um, you've spoken of the malaise you've seen in, in women, and I believe in one of, uh, in something you wrote a while ago, uh, you described a certain um, young woman in your classroom with a pile of tissues and sniffling all the time. Oh, oh, and, oh uh, the girl with the eternal cold? Yes. Am I compared yeah. to Andrew Dworkin to? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I want... <laughs> I'm wondering with um, what you see in, um, in young men, you know, in, say in your classes now, or what you observe, there's like a very high suicide rate and uh, rates of like drug abuse. And, uh, you know, what do you, um, what do you see out of the men today, or young men today? Well, uh, I, well, of course, I'm teaching at an art school. So I think that it's, it's not really, uh, you know, my, the, you know the, the students that I get are not necessarily typical of what's going on in the general culture. That is, they, the students have to be admitted to, to the University of the Arts. They have to have, you know, have a proficiency in whatever they, they want to study. So also right from the start, when the, when the students arrive as freshmen, they already have a direction. They always ha already have a kind of sense of identity, you know, uh, uh, you know in themselves. So I, I, so I think that I might not be getting, you know, people uh, who are uh, lost or searching, you know, who, the, who who, you know, other professors might be seeing in the classroom. But there's absolutely no doubt that with all this talk about women not having rights and this and that and this and that, men are being neglected, okay? I mean, and, you know, the, the environment in the public school system, okay, that, you know, as I have observed it, okay, for, for young men is horrible, okay? It's an, it's an all-female environment. You know, the men that teach in it have all, cons they've all collapsed okay, in the face of, you know, of, of the social welfare ideology, right? All that anyone cares about in the public schools now is like, no bullying, okay, we must, you know, we must treat everyone nice, okay, because this is the vision that they have in the public schools now, okay, so like, right? if you just be nice, people will be nice back to you, and that really is the answer to world peace, okay, all right, we have to be very nice, okay, right? try that with the Nazis, you know, stormtroopers, that's really going to work, okay, you know, you know, with, with them, all right, they have no, I mean, the, the, the young people are, 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 being, are given, being given a very censored okay, vision of history, okay, where you know, the, all, all the atrocities and barbarities of world history, the rise and fall of empires, you know, and so it's all concealed from them, okay? Right? Everything's about the present, okay, and adapting them to the present, right? So it, it, this, the environment is absolutely imprisoning for young men, okay? Right? Young men who have a lot of energy, okay? All right, their, their, their natural energy is being constrained in the classroom for, for the efficiency of this mechanism. It's one thing if they're learning something, but they aren't, okay? So I, I really want, um, you know, I, I want people to be thinking much more about vocational training, vocational classes, where people are doing things, getting out of those prison cells of, the, of you know of the classroom, all right? Uh, because you know throughout history, young men have been you know at the age of eleven or twelve, young men in the great age of sailing ships were off you know being they were always off on the on the ship. So you, you could do all kinds of things. You would apprentice to your, your father. You'd be, you'd be doing things by the time you're a teenager. Now we keep everybody like in this you know you, if you're going to be a, you know coming from a you know a, a, a bourgeois professional family, you have to like go into you know get get into a good school and and like you know and you march 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 along and these like little prison cells and so on, right? It's no wonder everyone's neurotic, okay? Why people are doping themselves, you know, half, you know, half the professional classes on meds, you know, you know and so on. Oh, poisons, poisons, you know, made in China, okay, all contaminated with lead. No! Okay, New York, no! Okay, please pass the word, okay? No, no, I always say drink beer, beer, wine, you know, just, that's what I say. That's what you, right? The ancient beverages and so on, all right? So, you, so and, and feminism isn't, hel isn't helping, okay? When I, like, I, like, like, when, when maybe it was, um, I don't what, how many years ago was it at this point? Maybe five years ago now. When I went to, I, I, I often I go periodically to the Yale Political Union at Yale. It's a student-run debate society, okay? And, they, and there's a dinner ahead of, you know, where you meet with the members of the union ahead of time. And I was, I was quizzing some of the young men there. Uh, they were talking about the way, uh, the moment they arrive in September, they, they, you know, they, they have to go to these training sessions at Yale, okay, about how they should behave on a date. I said, this is, outra I said, this is outrageous. I said, you're, you're, you're accepting this? Well, this is the, it's the norm. And I go, oh, this, I, you know, and I, and I look at these young men, and, you know, they were handsome, and they were smart, but they were neutered. They had been neutered. That's how they got into Yale, okay? They'd all been, they'd all been ground down, ground down, okay, into the image of what women thought men should be, okay? They had nothing left. They were like clones, okay, and so on, all right? So on, all right? And, so on, and I thought, fight back. And what did you fight back against this? Well, they, they saw no, they saw they couldn't even, even imagine, okay, challenging that, to, to, be, to be lectured to, okay, by a bunch of nanny administrators about how they're supposed to behave on a date. It's an insult. You know, it's, it, it, there, should, there should be a rebellion. 
rebellion against this. Okay, the administrators are the enemy. Okay, the administrators have like have like you know it's like a cancerous growth. Okay, everywhere overpaid administrators. Okay, this is one of the big issues in my book. Okay, the way they have robbed okay the faculty of authority. Okay, of the historic authority and the way the, fa the, the faculty just stood there. You know, just stood there and took it. Okay, when I my first job when I arrived at Bennington College. Okay, we we, we there was a, a new woman president came in, a young woman from Harvard. Okay, came in. It was like the, la the last gasp of 60s youth cult to give this 29 year old woman the presidency of, of Bennington and her husband. They were like co they was like so hip. Okay, have a have a co you know co president. You know, like the, you know the, the, the husband and so on. Well, after a few years, we had an uprising. Okay. When the trustees started, you know, doing things you know, that we th we felt was an incursion on faculty power, and the, and the faculty rebelled against the administrators. All right, I mean, it's, it's almost inconceivable today to imagine these, these, these the inert faculties doing anything to stand up against the administrators. All right, and, and so and it was like a big deal, and it was reported in the media. And Nor Ephron went up there, did a whole story on it for Esquire magazine. Okay, the Bennington upper, and what happened? And, and the reason that we did it, okay, was because we had one of the uh, veterans of, of you know of the Colum the Columbia radicals actually was a friend of mine there at the uh, you know at, um, at at Bennington and he was one of the leaders of you know of the rebellion. Remember there was a fact there's a student uprising. Well, maybe you don't remember. You're too young. Uh, but in 1968, I believe it was 68. Okay, uh, in the you know and where um, in, in they invaded the president's office and you have you know, you know one of them David Shapiro smoking a cigar with dark glasses you know at the president's desk and and so on and so forth. You know it's not, wait, why hasn't that happened? Okay, the student debt thing, okay, why haven't, why hasn't the left, okay, done some action, okay, against the, the universities, okay, instead they just go on, they let Yale and Harvard sit on these endowments, these obscene endowments, okay, meanwhile they're not paying city taxes, okay, in, in New Haven, all right, it's an, absolutely just re revolting, okay, so the leftists are all focusing their attention elsewhere, okay, but they don't want to, like, make their nice nest, okay, you know, in any way unstable, okay, they, they want to keep the, you know, the income stream, et cetera, all right, but anyway, back to both, is, uh, so here's my point, okay, all right, they, they, the today, this whole this whole college track thing, okay, for that for imposed on everyone now it, in the public school system is terrible for boys. Okay, and I think you know, the more that schools can adjust and have apprentice systems, you know, for, the way Germany does, okay, where you have uh, you know you have these associate you know these, this kind of collaboration with businesses where the businesses realize they need trained workers, and you start getting an overlap where, the, where 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 kids are leaving the school and going to the actual work site, learning a skill, learning a trade, and can support themselves. And you know, for years now, people have said, oh. The, the, the liberal arts, you know, should not be about you know, the c college. Should not be about job, you know, uh, preparing you for a job. Oh, how low! What? How low? Okay, we, we we want people to be able to survive in life instead of graduating with a shiny Harvard degree and working at Starbucks. Okay, you know, what kind of, you know, flipping burgers at McDonald's. That's, that's all they're oh, just like drop you into a job market. Wait, what? This is ridiculous. And it's, it's not as if the quality of the liberal arts education they got is worth anything either. Okay, they know nothing about anything except Foucault. Okay, so. <laughs> Oh, they know. I just love him. Just keep, keep beating that, keep beating his skinny haunches. All right. Anyway. <laughs> all right. Anyway, that's all right. I should stop. Okay. Thank you.